So you're at a club with your friends. The place is packed, but somehow it's feeling really dead. The DJ isn't playing any songs that'll make you dance, so no amount of alcohol will even change that. So put DJ Rofus Show on the ones and twos, and the party starts now. Yes, I'm DJ Rofus Show, and I would love to be a resident DJ at your club. As a club enthusiast, I love being out on the dance floor, dancing to my favorite hits nonstop. And as a DJ, I know that it's a priority for everyone to dance from start to finish. My style is upbeat, fist pumping, jumping, and going crazy are just some of the few symptoms that people go through when they listen to my mixes. I make sure that when the beat drops, the bass will hit you like a sledgehammer, and you will feel the presence of the music coursing through your body encouraging to dance like there's no tomorrow. I've DJed house parties small and big, as well as bars, and I would love the opportunity to perform at your club. So if you need a DJ who'll put on a show, don't hesitate to choose DJ Row for show. I'm not much of a dancer, but I do know about women and twerking. Twerking. The vigorous shaking of the gluteus maximus. Though it can be entertaining, it can also be a danger to those who aren't well prepared. I for one enjoy a good twerk, but the dangers of twerking can be catastrophic. These effects may include cramps in your gluteus maximus, mild back problems, excessive attention from creepy old men, causing male boners, being called a slut, and catching on fire while twerking on a door when suddenly someone opens it. So please, think before you twerk. What's going on folks and welcome to my segment called Turns Up where I'll be letting you know who's getting way too out of control this week. I'm your host Rofa Show and let's start with who's getting turned up right now. A well-known musician and talented person is going to rehab. No, it's not Lindsay Lohan but Chris Brown. This man is too scared to be facing any kind of jail time and would rather go to rehab to continue to pursue his life and his career from a healthier vantage point. The only healthy vantage point that I'm seeing is him not being raped from behind by another inmate while in jail. The alleged brawl started when two women wanted to take a picture with Brown in front of his hotel and saw two men trying to photobomb his picture. Brown and his bodyguard threw punches at one of the men which resulted in a broken nose. Last but not least, Kanye West is saying that Kim Kardashian is more influential than Michelle Obama. Let me give you guys a couple of seconds to let that sink into your brain. The only thing that was influential for me was her sex tape, and Kanye said, Michelle Obama cannot Instagram a pic like what my girl Instagrammed the other day. That's because your girl isn't out there helping kids stay active in their com community, but rather showing her ass to show her ass being active. That's all I have to say for now, but tune in next time to get turned up with me. Hello, my name is Roel Cristino, and I'm joined by my lovely guest, Alex Ferdon. Uh, she is one of the HR managers at Target. Now, Alex, I'm going to ask you a quick question. Um, what brought you to become an HR manager for Target? Oh, man. Um, I did not think I would be doing HR right off the bat, not going to lie. Um, I actually thought I was going to go into sales. Oh, I see. And um, just because I've always liked like, interacting with people. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what I was going for. But then I found Target and I really liked um, kind of their training program where you like are an executive, like you move around, you work with people all the time. And I actually just got placed in HR and I've loved it. <coughs> okay. So what aspect of um, the whole HR experience do you like exactly? Um, the thing I like most, and there's a lot that goes on with it, definitely, but the thing I like most is um, you're still kind of problem solving. So you're figuring out, like you're faced with a problem, you have to kind of think about a lot of different things, and then you have to solve that problem, but you're solving it with people as opposed to like numbers or anything like that. I see. So what problems do you face? Oh, man. Um, oh, on a normal day, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there's always kind of um, some sort of problem like between maybe like a team member, between like a team leader. And um, it, whether it's someone like coming to me and being like, I'm upset about this, or someone coming to me and asking me like how to solve a problem, um, it's usually kind of around like this incident happened and someone probably didn't handle it very well and then they need to figure out like what to do next. Like, mm -hmm. is there gonna be um, any action taken? Like in like a disciplinary standpoint or like how do I have this hard conversation and that's what I mostly help with. Okay, so how do you go about solving those problems? Has there been any like difficult like 
um, I guess for example a team member who just wasn't cooperating and you weren't <laughs> sure what to do like how do you yeah um, you don't have to say their name I won't because I know you know them um, <laughs> I'll try to tell one about you no, okay. I'm just oh, kidding. <laughs> um, no but there was one um, where we actually did have someone where like this person kept having issues and mm -hmm. it just like wasn't working like mm -hmm. he didn't really care like everyone else was like trying to make this better but the, if the person doesn't really care to improve then that makes it pretty difficult and so the biggest thing that I helped with was just kind of being like the devil's advocate so this team leader was coming to me like this person is doing this again and again and then mm -hmm. I kind of like take on the role of being like well what about this like well what if this is going on um, so it's hard because sometimes I like like the team leader or the other ETL will think like I'm not supporting them, but I am. I'm just trying to give them like the other side of the story mm -hmm. because another part of HR is like, I'm just trying to make sure no one gets sued. Yeah, that's <laughs> so really I, I pretty much like acted as a team member and did a lot of like role playing with this team leader. And then, um, you know, eventually this person ended up like going a different way and kind of stopped giving this team leader such a hard time. Okay. So another thing is uh, what do you enjoy? Like, you know, at the end of the day, after all the craziness, like what's yeah. something that you look forward to every time you're working? The thing that I enjoy most is, um, it's really just about like interacting with people. So when I, um, there's a lot of like development at Target and I know mm. it's kind of hard to see sometimes, but um, there's always people that are, want to move from like a, you know, team member to a team leader, a team leader to ETL. And even just like within my ETL team, like I constantly talk with them about where they want to go. And so when we're having those conversations and like, even if I have to like give someone feedback, like, hey, you did this and that was really stupid. And like, yeah. you probably could have handled that better. Mm -hmm. um, giving people advice on that and like helping with their development and moving up is what I like most. All right. So you can say Target is kind of like its own like family, like everyone. Yeah, yeah. no, it is. And it's kind of crazy because I don't think people know like how connected it is. And sometimes when you're like in a store, you just think it's the store, but it's really like, the entire district and like I'm constantly talking with other stores and doing a lot like outside of the store too so yeah I really like it okay so now I would love to ask is uh, if you weren't doing what you're doing now like what would you be doing at Target like besides Target like um, I think I would be doing HR somewhere else like okay. I, I don't know I really like it but I don't see myself leaving Target all right awesome well thank you again for the time it's been wonderful. Again, my name is Roel Cristino, joined by Alex Ferdon, and uh, good day. <laughs>